Hey everyone, welcome to the shop. Outside today, kind of soaking up the sun, getting ready to split some black walnut in half. Got a customer looking for some custom mantles to be built, so we'll be uh, starting that process. Hope you guys will join me. Was saying I've got a customer that wants two custom mantles in their home uh, they want them both made out of black walnut so I recently made a trip to their home brought the black walnut with me that I had allow them to pick out the pieces that they would like and so here we are back at the shop I've already got them milled down um, pretty close to being flat so now it's pretty much time to just mark them cut them and sand them um, as of right now, I've already kind of jumped ahead on one of those steps. I've already got a couple chalk lines ran out here all the way down to split these to the correct uh, widths. Now, this piece of walnut's going to run alongside their fireplace while I have another piece in the shop that I'll bring out and we'll have to cut down the middle so I can use that for the shelf or the mantle for each one. So, one, one mantle will have three pieces of walnut going to it and the other one will be more like a floating shelf style mantle where it's just, you know, this live edge board mounted to the wall. Um, right now, like I said, I've got the lines already marked and I'm getting ready to just cut these pieces. I'm not sure how well you guys can see it, um, but this starts off where the lines are touching and then they really start to widen as it goes. And at the end, I think I've got about a three and a half inch difference. Now the reason for that is so the edge that I cut will stay the same and there won't be so much kick out at the bottom of these logs because you know as a tree grows it's wide and then it gets more narrow. Well I want to try to keep the whole thing the same width between the top and the bottom. And I understand that the wood jets out here and there and I mean that's that's fine. We're going to be uh, shaping a lot of this to have more of a live edge look as well. And, and that's okay that's not a big deal but I want to try to have everything within you know six inches of width uh, except for this piece way back here the customer kind of wants a nice little showpiece to stick out you know kind of a conversation starter so we'll leave that one on but with all that said I've got a new Diablo blade on my circular saw and I'm gonna start ripping these bad boys down the middle if you noticed I don't have a track saw I have no track or no guide on here to help me cut this straight line. This is all going to be just a steady hand and a keen eye, taking my time, just going nice and slow. I'm going to throw the camera on high speed though, so you guys don't have to just sit around and wait for that, but I will let you know this is a fairly slow process, just taking my time, like I said, and just working my way down. All right, so quick look. Uh, it seems as though we'd be done, right? We're not. I'm trying to make sure that both ends of the slab are similar in size. If you look down here, this is a lot wider than this one. So I'm gonna cut one more piece off here so that these will be close to the same. Not sure if that makes sense, but it should look good once it's all together. Got this piece all cut, it's time to grab the second board and cut that down the middle as well. I've got the second piece of walnut all set up and it's time to make some cuts. So as you can see, I've moved the board inside. I've got it laid out, and right now I'm uh, figuring out where I want to put these bow tie inlays. These are walnut inlays. Um, I just kind of want to put them across the cracks, as you guys can see here. Now, I didn't do a full video on making these. If that's something you guys want to see, comment below, and I'll do a video on making those and uh, putting them in in the future. 
So I've already traced them out and I'm using my router with a small bit just to cut where the inlays will fit. So I kind of do the rough shape with the router so I'm not using, well, so I'm not doing so much chisel work. Um, I will use the chisel though, as you guys will see here coming up, to really refine the edges and get things really close for a nice tight fit. Working on these bow tie inlays, use my router, get them cut out quick, and now it's time to do some chisel work. So just being careful with the chisel to not make the, uh, the hole any bigger than the inlay. Everything should just have a nice snug and tight fit. This one's all set, getting ready here to glue it in in just a minute, like rounding this edge so it pops in place easily and once it's glued in I will be just kind of cutting the top away with a flush cut saw and that'll be ready for sanding so just makes it easier to sand once you've cut that top off a little bit of sanding and that thing is done three more to go So as you can see, I really slowed down the last section of video there, just so you guys can get an idea of the time frame. I mean, obviously it's sped up, but you guys can get a general idea of how long this takes. I didn't really time myself, so I can't give you guys an accurate you know, time, but it is time consuming. Um, but you know, when it's a passion, it's something you love and you want to put out nice work, then you slow down and you try to do things right and accurate and uh, refined. Well, as you just saw, I used my uh, rigid six inch sander to kind of give these things a quick sand. Um, those were all the inlays in place there for this first mantle. And now really it's just getting this thing sanded down and getting it ready for its first few coats of Danish oil. Here is, you know, both mantle pieces, the one that's done, the one that wasn't. Um, starting it here with the router like I did in the last one you know getting those holes roughed out getting them close with the router you know, changing bits to a little bit bigger bit here so it can handle the depth cutting away a little more wood and I'll be getting into that chisel work I mean you really got to be passionate about this stuff you really got to enjoy uh, the time that it takes so here you guys can see I'm mixing up some resin, uh, just filling in the cracks and any little imperfections with it. I want to make sure this has a nice smooth surface so when the customer goes to dust their mantles there's no you know, spots that are getting filled with dust over the years. I ended up gluing with hot glue just some wood on the ends where the cracks were and on the bottom side so none of the, uh, the resin would go through. Now I'm using my sanders here to uh, you know, get that resin all sanded down. So once that resin is all sanded down with 180 grit, I'll be filling any imperfections with a little more resin, letting that set up, and go over and going over it again with the 180. 
Uh, once that 180 is, is done and everything's nice and smooth, we'll hit it again with some 220. And that'll be the final sanding before we start wiping it down with Danish oil. Well, I figured I'd give you guys some close-up shots of the mantle build here. I jumped ahead quite a bit on you. Um, everything's been sanded. I've done three coats of Danish oil using quad out steel wool. After the steel wool and Danish oil, all four pieces sat for eh, about a week to make sure the Danish oil dried fully. Um, then it was time to apply the wipe on polyurethane. So I applied three coats of that. Um, after all that dried, it was time to come back with the steel wool and finishing wax. Because I didn't want everything to have this high glossy look to it. I wanted more of this natural look. And that's kind of what the customer was looking for on this project. More of a, a natural look, a nice sheen, not real plasticky. So we went ahead and did that for the finish. Now I do have to rewind it here a little bit for you guys. So you can see here where the black walnut bow tie inlays are. Sorry, we've got some sunlight creating glare, but I filled in all the cracks here with a two-part epoxy resin. Um, just poured it in so this is a nice smooth finish with bow ties. That is actually one mantle there by itself, that long piece with those four walnut inlays. And this is the other mantle. Now this only has three walnut inlays and this also has the epoxy pour in there as well. Now this mantle, this piece, and this piece are all going to be one, one unit together. That's it. These are, these are done. Um, basically, I'm going to wrap them up in some moving blankets, wrap them in plastic, use some duct tape, put them in the truck, and deliver them and install. Uh, I have to do it that way because I do not have an enclosed trailer and I don't have a cap on my truck. And the way the weather is here in New York, I've got potential for rain or snow this time of year. And I just, I can't afford to have these things get ruined in transit. So this is where I'm at. Like I said, next install. I hope you guys will come back for that. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and hit subscribe. All right, so it's not the end of the video. This is my setup for the install at the customer's house. A little bit of rain outside, so can't be the easiest way to go. I'm getting ready to uh, cut and fit the side pieces that are going to go vertical on each side of this fireplace. Right now I'm uh, kind of sanding away the extra grout. Um, there's just some extra grout on the corners where the stones meet the wall all the way around. And so I'm using my rigid multi-tool to just kind of cut that away, sand it down, I guess. I've, I've got nice good corners on the wood that I brought, so I want it all to fit as tightly as possible. Luckily, my customer let me use their vacuum as I forgot mine, so <laughs> remember, always pack a small shop vac. Here I'm getting some liquid nail ready to put those side pieces on with. Um, it's not going to be the only thing holding it on. I know I didn't shoot the video of it, but I pre-drilled some holes and some lags that are going through those side pieces, countersunk. They're gonna hit the studs at the bottom and at the top. So I guess that would be the, the bottom and the top plate for the wall. Um, then I also made some black walnut plugs that will glue in those spots so that you don't see any of the, the uh, lags holding them in. Um, just kind of taking away a little piece of trim there so the pieces that go on each side will fit to the, uh, the ceiling. Um, also doing a quick sand on the wall. I did that on each side. That way the liquid nail had something to stick to. Here I've got the board outside. Um, it is not a flat ceiling. It actually has an angle, so I had to measure and figure out my angle cut so everything would fit nice and snug. I did spend a fair amount of time uh, just fitting. So it looks like quite a bit on this one side, but Trust me, the other side got the same amount of attention. I just want to make sure everything fit perfectly before I put the liquid nail on and really screwed these things in place. So this should be the final installation here. Um, and I'll be popping those plugs in with a little bit of glue. And that'll be it for this.
Next thing will be moving on to the mantle that actually runs horizontal on the fireplace. The stones on the top of the fireplace don't sit um, all at the exact same height. Some are a little taller than others. So I'll have to hold the mantle up there, use my level, and kind of figure out some nice straight level lines so I know where to mount to mount it. You know, I want to make sure it's got a nice level surface side to side and front to back. And so you can't really use the stones as a, uh, as a guide. So now measuring out to, uh, to mount the brackets on the wall. Some of these were able to hit studs, some were not. It's just kind of the way it goes. Those brackets were custom made just for this job though. And basically you had to drill a hole into the side of the board so the board would slide over the steel rods and basically float. Here's some up close shots for you guys though so you can kind of see the work a little bit better. Um, this is as far as I go on this project. Their mason has to come in and they're going to add stones right over those brackets and go the rest of the way up that wall all the way to the ceiling. Once that's done this is just going to be such a, such a beautiful piece in this room. Now it's time to start the next one. I wasn't able to shoot video for this whole install in the second mantle. As I had some real time constraints, I just had to really knock this out. Uh, again, I used the custom made brackets to hold everything in place and screw them to studs and slide the board on. And that was it. You know, this came out great as well. Can't wait to see it with all the stonework. Well, as finished. you guys can see, quite a bit of work had to go into this project between getting the walnut boards, cutting them down, getting them sanded, doing the inlays, doing the epoxy, re sanding, doing the finishing work that I didn't really show you because it probably would have been another 15 minutes on this video. So we kind of cut that out, sorry. If you guys want some more specifics on that stuff, if you want a, a video on doing the inlays, you know, maybe more of a step-by-step -step on how to do bow tie inlays, please comment below. You know, it's a video I'll put on the board with other requests that I currently have and it's something you can look forward to in the future. Make sure you guys are giving this video a thumbs up and hit and subscribe. I really love that kind of support. And also, when you hit subscribe, be sure to hit the little bell that pops up so you can be notified when new videos are uploaded. I'm going to be doing some more work for these customers in the future. We've got some really cool projects planned, and you guys don't want to miss out. I've also got some really cool interior jobs coming up for some other customers, and trust me, you're, you're not going to want to miss it. They're just some really cool pieces. Um, as always, I'll still be doing some chainsaw carving, um, how-tos, and just, you know, custom orders. So, again, just some great stuff to look forward to. I thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.